the mage. Master of the Essence. They bring terrible elements to bear in devastating spells. Your go-to for ranged caster combat in really any MMORPG you play. And that isn't about to change for Ashes of Creation. Players will have the ability to combine skills from different elements or focus exclusively on a single one to truly customize the type of mage they want to be. These elements include air, earth, fire, water, and electric, each with their own resistances. Elemental abilities will take on unique perks depending on the seasons of the regions you're in. This could mean your frost spells are more powerful in the winter and fire spells are stronger in the summer. You may also find places in the world with stronger magical influences that interact with these abilities as well. Choosing a main Age is just the beginning of your journey, as Ashes of Creation has a very unique take on classes. While the core mage archetype is similar to what you might imagine, it isn't what defines the class. What makes up a true class in Ashes of Creation is the combination of the primary archetype and the secondary archetype, which will be unlocked around level 25, giving players 8 potential options for each archetype. For the mage, these combinations are the Acolyte being a mage cleric, the Arch Wizard being a mage mage, the Battle mage being a mage fighter, the shadow caster being a mage rogue, the sorcerer being a mage bard, the spell hunter being a mage ranger, the spell stone being a mage tank, and the warlock being a mage summoner. The primary archetype you pick upon character creation is a permanent choice. The secondary archetype will be unlocked through player progression around level 25 and will not be a permanent choice. You can swap this one out as you choose. It might just take you some time contributing to a quest line to do this and it won't be as simple as just clicking a button. Essentially what this secondary archetype does is augment the primary, changing the types of abilities, their appearance, and how they interact with targets. However, it will not add any new skills to the class kit. It's all about the augment, which will really help allow players to customize their characters to their preferred playstyle. Keep in mind that everything we know about the mage and every other archetype is a work in progress. Ashes of Creation is in its alpha 2 state, and anything and everything could change as they react to player feedback and continue to develop this game. Most of your abilities will be unlocked through careful selection of a skill tree. You won't have a hundred different abilities in your spellbook to place on your bars. Intrepid wants you to make thoughtful selections within the skill tree to cater to your playstyle. This could mean selecting more PvP oriented abilities or PvE depending on what you're doing in the game. As you progress, you'll unlock skill points, said to unlock about every fraction of a level instead of once per level like in most games. This feature though appears to not be fully implemented yet, as based on the abilities we've seen in the live stream, it seems to be a skill point per level basis. You can spend these points in your skill tree to gain new abilities or upgrade existing ones that you have previously specced into. Looking at the skill tree on the screen, it's clearly a work in progress suited for a level cap of 35. This is not going to represent the final skill tree you'll see at launch in any way shape or form and you will see abilities come and go throughout the alpha testing some of the abilities you say now may not even be present in the official launch of alpha 2 if intrepid decides they didn't fit with their class design as they hoped as a mage, you will wield a formidable array of spells that bend the very elements to your will. Mastery over these abilities will define your prowess in battle. When you need a direct assault, unleash Arcane Volley, firing a barrage of 7 arcane missiles at your target, each dealing 35% arcane damage. It's a swift and devastating attack that can quickly turn the tide of battle. For Ball of Lightning, you will summon a large sphere of charged electricity that travels slowly forward, dealing 50% lightning damage to enemies it touches and applying a volatile effect, making them even more susceptible to your lightning-based attacks. When swift movement is essential, well, Blink will be at your disposal. Instantly teleport 20 meters in the direction you're moving, allowing you to evade attacks or reposition yourself strategically in the blink of an eye. For area control, Blizzard lets you channel a massive storm around you, bombarding enemies enemies with hail shards. Each shard impacts with 50% ice damage in a small area and applies the frozen effect to chilled targets. Chain lightning is perfect for dealing with groups of enemies. Release a powerful streak of lightning that hits your primary target and chains outwards to up to 5 nearby enemies. Each struck with 175% lightning damage and applying up to 20 stacks of shock to any volatile targets. Cone of Cold unleashes a freezing wind in a cone, dealing 125% ice damage and applying the frozen status effect to chilled targets. It's perfect for controlling and damaging groups of enemies in front of you. When you're using your basic weapon attack and seeking to enhance those attacks, elemental empowerment will be key. 
Each elemental spell you cast alters your weapon combo finishers to apply burning, chilled, or volatile effects based on the current empowered elements, adding extra damage and utility to your strikes. Fireball is a classic mage spell, hurling a ball of fire towards your target that deals 100% fire damage and applies burning for an additional 75% fire damage. With three charges, you can constantly keep the pressure on your enemies. Frostbolt sends a bolt of frost at your target, delivering 225% ice damage and applying chilled to targets that were attacked, making it a pretty powerful single attack. Charging up your lightning strike allows you to release a bolt of lightning that deals 275% lightning damage based on how long it was charged. This devastating attack also applies up to 20 stacks of shock to any enemy it hits. For area denial, Magma Field creates a boiling pool of lava at a target location, dealing 30% fire damage and applying burning at a 50% fire damage power every 2 seconds to enemies within. This fiery pool lasts for 8 0.1 seconds, punishing anyone who dares to enter. Prismatic Beam channels a powerful beam attack that periodically deals 30% magic damage with additional effects based on your current elemental empowerment, making it a pretty versatile deadly spell. To protect yourself on the battlefield, Shell surrounds you with a protective magical barrier that absorbs up to 500% magical power before breaking. The Shell will last 15 seconds, giving you time to survive that enemy onslaught. And finally, Slumber allows you to incapacitate targets around you, putting them to sleep for 10 seconds, taking them out of the fight and giving you a strategic advantage. Ashes of Creation really seems to be taking a more traditional approach to the mage archetype, giving players something that feels familiar yet refreshing. The archetype doesn't really go out of its way to reinvent the wheel, but it still manages to have a nice variety of abilities that you can augment further, and it seems to be the perfect archetype for anyone new jumping into the MMO genre. The mage is shaping up very nicely for Alpha 2, and is an archetype that I'm very excited to get my hands on when the Gate of Vera open once again for us A2 testers.